Welcome to today's RSO Roundup. I'm Sergeant Albert Martinez, and I'm here today with Mike Crabe, who is a, a deputy, and you also have uh, some special team that you're on that we were talking about. Can yes. you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, I'm on the Sheriff's Dive Team, okay. the Search and Recovery Team. All right, and I, I do know Mike from when we worked, we worked at Paris. Yes. That was some good times there. And then you're part of the dive team. Yeah, I'm part of the dive team. Which I know a lot of people that are either watching us or uh, listening to us, they're going to be wondering, wow, that sounds like an awesome job. I get to swim while I'm a cop and, <laughs> and do some fun thing, which you also said there's some things that you probably don't like about that job. Yeah, well, I, I will say it was, it was not on my radar at all um, as far as being with the Sheriff's Department. Um, something I'd never thought about until uh, I got interested in diving. Uh, and I got interested in diving through um, nonprofit organizations that help uh, veterans. And I went through the program with my dad and got open water certified. And then after people found out that I was open water certified, I was approached by one of the sergeants on the dive team and they said, hey, why don't you come out and try out for the dive team? Okay. I myself have always wondered, you know, you go on vacation, you see all these places where you could go diving, and I've also thought, hey, maybe I should do that class, and you did kind of mention it. We do have a, not us, but there's a nonprofit organization. You should, might as well give them some credit. They, oh, they yeah. did give you some certification, so who are they? So um, I also work with Dive Guardians. Dive Guardians is a nonprofit organization that offers um, for open water certification for first responders. Uh, law enforcement, fire, EMS, things like that. Um, so I've been working with them, um, helping get first responders certified. Um, some of them after the certified come and try out for the dive team. Okay, now as far as being part of the dive team, there's different things that you guys do as a team. It's not a team that's fully activated all the time, I would assume, no, right? No, it's a collateral team. Okay, so what would be a normal, typical day once you guys get that call, hey, you know what, the, uh, the dive team needs to get activated and head out to a scene? Uh, we'll receive emails, text messages, um, saying that there's a call out. Uh, typically, it'll let us know where it's at. Um, we don't know all the details at that time. Uh, we'll meet at the boathouse, which is in Paris. Um, that's where we have all our, we have our boat, we have our trailer, all our gear, things like that. And then we go anywhere in the county that, that the call out is. Now, for those that are not familiar with our county, Riverside County, what or how many lakes do we have here within our county that you guys train in? Well, th that's that's the thing. Um, you've got your natural lakes like Lake Elsinore, Lake Paris, Lake Hemet, things like that. Um, what people don't think about is the other bodies of water, um, like at the golf courses or um, out in the east end, uh, they've had floods where all of a sudden you've got a flood coming down this uh, hillside and now you've got a body of water okay and something can happen so it's not just um, the lakes that you typically think of where people have their recreational things um, Diamond Valley Lake things like that um, it's also these other bodies of water that we've had to respond to okay now in regards to those body of waters what's been one of the craziest I guess incidents lakes cold uh, hot, I don't know. You tell me. Well, well yeah, temperatures definitely uh, vary depending on the time of year, but um, I would say Lake Elsinore by far is one of the most challenging lakes, um, and that's basically because of the visibility. So j just kind of imagine um, you are going down, you're going, you're going down to a place at the bottom of the lake where you can't see, you can't hear, um, you are completely um, going by feel and by touch. So, I mean, you don't know how deep you are. None of your instruments are visible because it's dark. Um, and a place like Elsinore, uh, Lake Elsinore, I'll just close my eyes. So I'm completely blind when I dive. And um, I mean, it gives me goosebumps thinking about it now because it, it is probably one of the, uh, the more difficult situations to be in because you're completely relying on your surface support because they're watching how long you're under. Um, in about 15 minute mark, they'll start tugging on your line to say, you know, hey, time to come up. You need to check your air, check your time, things like that, because you have no concept of time um, when you're under there. You're just doing whatever job you're supposed to do and trying to get it done as quickly as possible but also not burn through your air at the same time because you're limited on your air. Um, 
and then you're limited on how much time you can be down there because again, you don't know how deep you are. And depending on the depth that you're at, that will determine how fast or how slow you can surface. I so see. you may need to reserve some air to stop halfway up for a safety stop before you can completely come to the surface. So it's, it's, it's challenging. It's, it's black water diving. Um, How many people are on the dive team? Um, we've got a good mix maybe. I think there's 25 to 30, including support, um, shore support and divers. Um, so when we have call outs, we have you know, a little bit from both sides, depending on people's schedules, where they're at. So for people that are out there watching this event take place, you're out there on Lake uh, Elsinore, there's probably 15 divers, let's just say, all of them are actually doing a job. It's not just oh, yes. them standing around and, hey, you know what, there's two people in the water. Like you said, somebody's actually tugging on your rope and making sure that you're okay. Yeah, the, the by far the hardest workers on the team are the shore support. They, they're they making sure that our gear is, is connected correctly. They're helping us get in and out of our gear because it's a lot of gear. Um, we wear dry suits um, and we're fully encapsulated, which means um, any contaminants or anything on the outside cannot get into us um, because some of the conditions we dive in, we don't really know what's in the water, um, whether it's chemicals or whatever that can harm us. So we we're fully encapsulated, a full helmet, everything when we go underwater. Um, so they help us get that ready. They help us get dressed with it. Um, they check our air. Um, they're making sure everything's set for us. When we're in the water, they're keeping time. They're checking our air. They're helping us get in and out um, of the water, in and out of the boat, um, all that stuff. They help us get out of the gear when we're done because when we come up, depending on what we're doing there, um, you'd be exhausted. So Now, as far as part of that team, do you have volunteers that We do. Out? We have um, a few volunteers that um, help us out. They come, they donate their time. Um, and they come out on call outs, they come out on training. Um, they help us with certifications, depending on how many certifications the volunteer has. Um, but yeah, we, we offer it to volunteers. If, as well. anybody's, if anybody's interested in becoming a volunteer for the dive team, what would they need to do? Uh, you can just contact the dive team through the sheriff's website. Okay. Um, we do tryouts um, annually, and we'll have tryouts for shore support, we'll have tryouts for divers. Now you said website, you guys have a, we have our website that you guys are on there. Then there's also a couple other channels that people could look at. Yeah, we have, um, the dive team has an Instagram that you can go to and a Facebook page. Which you guys are very active. I know that the sergeant that's on there, he's one of the, uh, the contributors of that page and I know he's yes. very active on there. I know you also post a lot of pictures. I follow you on Instagram and uh, you're a very amazing person, I'll tell you that. <laughs> For those of you guys don't know, Mike, uh, I was actually just looking at his Instagram uh, last night. It looked like you were bench pressing two humans. Um, <laughs> just you by- stay in shape. <laughs> you guys stay in shape. Which, how old are you? Uh, just turned 50. So if people are interested in joining, even department members oh, yeah. that you know, they think, hey, well, I'm too old to be a dive team member. You're 50 and you're doing it. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's 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 incredible. What uh, requirements as far as uh, do you think they would need or, or what is it that to help them out? Uh, it really helps if you have your advanced open water um, before you come to try out. Um, after that, uh, you'll do our fitness test. And then after the fitness test, um, an interview and a background check. Uh, if you're a volunteer, um, if you're a department member, um, you'll come out and, and do your, your fitness test. And as long as um, it works with whatever station or unit you're working with, then you can come on the team. That's awesome. So a lot of things happen when you're on the dive team. I'm looking through some of these pictures. I mean, I've seen planes. I see, which people are wondering why a plane. I see cars in a canal. There's a lot of things that the dive team does. Yeah, we, we, we're always mission ready for whatever, whatever they call us to do. Um, we're search and recovery. So on the search aspect, um, we'll get calls from uh, detectives who say, you know, hey, somebody threw, um, we looked for a hard drive one time out in Diamond Valley. Um, uh, we've looked for, um, I mean, anything and everything related to a crime, a cell phone. Um, there's a rock quarry out in uh, the Rupa area that I never even knew existed. 
that we went to and we were looking for evidence there. So we do that um, and then we do recovery. Every once in a while, um, a car will end up in, in a body of water somewhere. Um, the canal out in the east end of our county, um, we've gone out there many times to pull cars out. Um, some cars that have been stolen and people put them there um, for whatever reason, they end up in the water. So uh, we go out there and we pull those out. Um, another aspect is uh, body recovery. When, when we get a report of a drowning somewhere, um, we go out to that body of water and we, we search. And, and one of the things that we use to help search, we have sonar. So we'll hook up a sonar to our boat um, and we'll go back and forth over the last known point that somebody says, hey, this is where I saw this person at. Um, and the sonar gives us a good view of what's under the water and kind of helps us narrow our search down. Okay. And then um, if we do, the, one of the biggest aspects of, of us recovering somebody who's drowned is, is bringing closure to that family, bringing their loved one back to them um, so that they can go through whatever process they need to go through. So that, that is one of the, the things that we do as well um, in conjunction with the coroner's office. Okay. Now, question on the uh, sonar. So let's say we have a car down there mm -hmm. and you're floating over this car. Does that sonar show you a shape of the car? Or It, it does. Um, it, it, it's, it's pretty good resolution, um, and it can pick up everything. We've, we've found boats. Um, every once in a while, somebody will they'll have something happen, and they end up sinking their boat. Um, and we can go, and we can find the boat with the sonar. We can find cars. Um, everything like that. Crazy. Um, you mentioned a plane. Yes. So yeah, we do have a plane on our website. Um, we recently um, had a, a plane uh, donated to us and um, we are looking at a, somewhere where we, we can sink that plane and just further our dive training. Um, the dive team is, a, we're a FEMA rated team, which means we, we keep certain levels of certifications within our team so that we can actually deploy anywhere in the world that we're needed. That, that's the level that our dive team is at. Um, so we have divers on our team who, who can do you know, cave dives and all this different type of, um, this different type of dives. Uh, if a natural disaster happens somewhere or something occurs, um, when they had the, uh, the tragedy up north with the dive boat that went, um, that went under, um, we were on standby for that. You know? So we're ready to go anywhere. It doesn't have to be within our county we can get deployed anywhere and and help and assist that is awesome and that's probably why you guys go all over the uh, country training different types of lakes yeah and a lot of people lakes. will ask me you know well, why are you going to go ice diving we, do, we don't get ice we don't you know we don't have frozen lakes here in riverside county no but there are frozen lakes out there and and accidents happen and sometimes a certain area may not have a dive team they may not have people certified or qualified to do what needs to be done so they call us and we can go out of state or out of county and, and go assist. Um, altitude diving is a different type of diving. We have lakes up here that are in the mountains and altitude diving is a completely different type of diving. There's a lot of science involved with um, atmosphere and pressures and, and all that that you have to take into account. And if you don't understand it and, and follow the rules, you can really hurt yourself. Amazing. So, well, if you guys wonder why you guys see the Riverside County Sheriff's Department dive team in your city, county, state, this is the reason why, because we could technically go anywhere. Anywhere. That is, that is awesome to, to know that. Um, also, if we have any people that are wanting to be a volunteer, look us up on our website. You, you guys have a website also as far as for the uh, the dive team and the Instagram and Facebook. So make sure you look us up there. And well, I will also mention as far as our department, if you want to be on our, our dive team and you work for our department, um, it was in the past, it had been only open to sworn members. But now we have correctional members, we have bailiffs, we have anybody that's within the department can apply and, and see if you're qualified to help out on the dive team. Great. So we did open that up as well. 
Great. Well, thank you, Mike. Thank you for being part of this part, podcast, for giving us all that knowledge, giving us all that information. Thank you for your service. For everybody that's watching and listening to us, don't forget, look us up on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Uh, same thing with the dive team. And until the next RSO Roundup.